old buddy, old pal, old buddy, old pal, old buddy. This is Tony with Tony and D's. And I got Detroit and she gonna be on I love her. <laughs> this is Detroit. Hey, we just gonna do something. This is kind of like uh, Detroit. This, you just want to flow with whatever you. Know. We just gonna do put together something for y'all to help y'all with prepping and this, that, and the other. Show you some of the things that we do. And uh, so we we just gonna just show you a few things, Diddy. I've got some things that I put together, and D has some things that she puts together. So you want to go first, or what, you want to do ladies first? What? How you want to do? It? I don't know. How you do can, we want to do? You can. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll go first. We've had, uh, I'm friends with a lot of you guys on Facebook and a lot of questions have been asked about how do I get started with prepping? What do I do to get started with prepping? So I'm going to show you a very simple breakfast idea, very inexpensive breakfast idea. And this is for food storage because right now in the times that we're living in, we don't know how long we may be on the shelter in place. And it may be a time when you're not able to go to the store as readily as you have been able to in the past. Yeah. So we're going to kind of give you some ideas of things you can do for you and your family, especially if you have children and, you know, if you have a larger family. The prepared meals that they sell online a lot of times are more expensive, and they don't really give you the food that you expect. And sometimes they have more preservatives and additives. And so we're going to show you a simple way to put together the foods that you like to eat for your family and for yourself that's very inexpensive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put together oatmeal. You're going to put that in, oatmeal? Yeah, I'm going to put together oatmeal. Okay. I like oatmeal. I know some people might say, like, eh, I don't like oatmeal. I, I like, like this. I like the steel cut oats. He I, like the I don't like that little, little, little sorry little flakes you be getting those. Whatever. Wimpy, wimpy, wimpy. I like the steel cut. Steel cut. Well, okay. <laughs> so I know everybody's seen these containers of the old fashioned oats. Mm -hmm. This, I think, costs like $2.25 for this big. Stock up on For this big uh, container. Stock up on Stock okay. up on and the measurements that we're going to use for this is going to be for a full serving. It's going to be half a cup of oats. Let me get my notes here since we're doing this lab. I want to get it right. <laughs> half a cup of oats, a fourth of a teaspoon of salt, or you can omit it, you don't have to add it. And then a teaspoon of sugar, and a fourth of a teaspoon of cinnamon. I like cinnamon in mine, so I'm going to show you how to put it together. And this is for you to have like for food storage. You can make these little meals, put them up, and that way if you have to leave your home for whatever reason and go to an alternate location, you'll be able to take food with you that you'll be able to eat. Okay? Go ahead, Timothy. Alright. Timothy. I know I'm on. Oh, show the people, Dee Dee. Okay. <laughs> so. That's what, a cup? A half cup? This is half a cup of oats. Now what we start, we learned to do is put them like in little snack bags or little sandwich bags to begin with because when you put them in the food saver you don't want it to puncture yeah. your bag. Yeah, that stops a lot of things from being punctured when you do it that way. So that's pretty neat. So that's your half a cup of oats and let's see, four teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna use that too for my. You gonna use that too? Yeah. Okay. You need your this thing over here, or you do I got it. Okay. Okay. So. I'll do it. And like I said, you can. This and the salt, the salt, the salt that she has right there, it's a mixture of what we put together. It, it's a, uh, it's a Himalayan sea salt that has a high tra trace, uh, mineral trace, right? And it's a. Uh, uh, I've got I've got some I I got iodine a natural iodine that I ground up with that uh, Himalayan sea salt and then I, we put this thing in there called no salt which is super high in potassium so this right here the salt that she's putting in there is a is a keto friendly and a blood pressure friendly uh, salt mm -hmm. it's very low in sodium mm -hmm. it's got high potassium which is what you need if you're dealing with blood pressure issues and things like that. And uh, the iodine, it's a natural iodine. Let me see if I can get it. Yeah, it's a natural iodine that I, I grind it all together. So th this is the no salt right here. She gets this no salt here, right? Let me keep y'all in the light, I guess. It's the way this feminine is going. Okay, so there's the no salt. And then this no salt, it's 640 milligrams of potassium 
per fourth teaspoon, 640 milligrams of potassium. So it's a pretty good deal. Okay, this is no salt that we put in there. And I use that, uh, and I mix it with my things, I mix it with Himalayan uh, sea salt, the pink Himalayan sea salt. Uh, let me see. It's the real deal. And it's this right here, Himalayan sea salt. It's, it's the good stuff, okay? And uh, it's got 84 active uh, trace minerals. I'm gonna put that closer, just in case y'all can't see, but it's 84 active trace minerals. There it's showing right there where my finger is, okay? So we, we uh, I get this and then I have the, what is the iodine? And I've got this uh, natural, this is a uh, kelp, this is iodine, okay? And this has a little potassium in it too. It's 80, 80 milligrams of uh, potassium, but it's iodine. It's 970% iodine. It's a natural iodine that you get from uh, the kelp there. So uh, it's good stuff. I just mix them together. I just start making my own seasonings. I have a coffee grinder that I put stuff in and I grind them together and make my own seasonings because I like the way things taste. Some of the natural, uh, all season salt, they kind of like, yeah, okay, they're good, some good, some are like, okay, I gotta add stuff to it or take away. So sometimes I mix my own up. So I'm gonna let Dee go and get with her oatmeal to show y'all this and her healthy uh, salt portion she has. I'll leave those up there. Okay, to give a quick recap, we got half a cup of oats and we got a fourth of a teaspoon of the salt. And I'm going to add my teaspoon of sugar or any sweetener that you want. We use the monk sweetener because it doesn't spike your insulin. I'm not diabetic, but sugar spikes your insulin levels. Yeah. And so if you have high blood pressure or you're dealing with uh, weight issues or anything like that, this monk fruit, your body processes it better because it's natural uh, sugar. The cane sugar and whatnot, I mean, it's, it's okay, but that's a better option. Okay, so now we put a teaspoon of sugar in there, and now I'm going to put a fourth of a teaspoon of my cinnamon. Okay. And what I've done is these are bags that come with this food saver. They've already been pre-cut and sealed. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the oatmeal pack in this food saver bag. Make sure I got it in there really good. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to seal this all together. And all you need to do to eat this oatmeal is add one cup of water hot, cold, one cup of water, and it'll be good to go. So, All right. Now we'll pick up from here. Go ahead, Dee Dee. Okay, so now I'm gonna put this oatmeal bag into the uh, food saver. And the food saver, the food saver bags we get, I like to get the eight inch. It's the eight inch one by 20 feet. They have some 11 inch ones, but they're so long that when we try and put them in the buckets to for storage, they, they, they take up more room than the 8 inch one. So this is our, our favorite bags to put in. So she's got this going in. Okay. And as you can see, it's sealed really good, really tight. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to label this across the top and I'm going to put, you know, what it is and to add one cup of water to it. But this is it. And then put the date on it. And put the date on it. Yeah. That's it, huh? She said that's it. I guess you get to mine. I'm, I'm a little chinchy. <laughs> Where's the marker? Uh, the marker's right here, though. Yeah. Okay, whichever one. I'm not sure which one you use, but I get a little chinchy. So I put together some of my things. I, I have various things that I put together. We did rice and beans. We did potatoes. We did... Uh, different types of soups that we did, but my thing is, you know, I, I know you guys know about these cup of noodles and things like that, right? So what I've done is I, I decided to, uh, I bought a dehydrator, that's what you see over here. 
that's the dehydrator. And what I do is I dehydrate. Uh, you can dehydrate anything. You can dehydrate your vegetables. You can dehydrate your meats. You can dehydrate everything a lot cheaper than what you would pay for already pre uh, dehydrated meals or freeze dried meals. In fact, I think the average meal in the store that's freeze freeze dried or dehydrated is going for like four to five dollars per meal, right? If not higher, because yeah. they're, they're, they're running low yeah. on those packaged meals, those buckets. Yeah. And the last that I saw, some of those buckets went for over $100. And they see, only had like 30 days yeah. worth of food. And see, and, and, that, and now what you can do with $20, and that's how me and my wife, we found out with $20, we can do 30 days worth of food mm -hmm. for $20. And so, so we were like, okay, I'm not spending $20 for four meals. Let me spend $20... And get the, the I get the frozen vegetables. Uh, I get noodles. I can you can use I use these maruchan noodles. You know I use those noodles. And then I have got some mung bean noodles that I use. You even, know even the ramen noodles. if you want to use those mung bean and so and uh, and and uh, what I do is I put together my own soups because even these cup of soups. These are not expensive, but you can get you can put together more, make cheaper versions of it, and you can put more together that you need. You know when it comes to that. So uh, what I've done is I just take the noodles and what I've done is I take them out of the pack. I don't now. It's up to you. However you want to do this, it's uh, it's up to you. However you want to do it, because here's the deal. You can use the pack of seasonings that come with it, or you can season it up and put it in your own packs. But I just take the noodles yeah. and I just put them in a bag. I put them in a, a Ziploc bag because these are kind of sharp on some edges there. So I don't want it to pierce my uh, food saver bag. So I put it in a Ziploc bag. I leave it open here so when I seal it, it takes all the air. It seals everything shut like you saw on, on Dee's oatmeal. It, it, it sealed everything shut. Everything is, all the air is out of it. No air is in there at all. It's just sealed. It's just shut, sealed. You know, it took everything out. So, so and that's how, why I leave the Ziploc bag these open. these packs can last? What? Well, here's, here's how, uh, these packs like this, you can have them sealed in these things, and if they stay dry and they stay sealed, uh, you can have them one to two years easily, you know? But when we, we do another process is we seal them in a five gallon bucket, okay? So when we seal them in a five gallon bucket on top of being sealed there, that five gallon bucket, we seal it and we put some airtight, uh, the, the little oxidizer the things in there that takes out the oxygen in the five gallon buckets. And then when we seal those, that makes that good for five years minimum. And then when we use Mylar bags, which I'll show you what the Mylar bags are. We have things that we seal in Mylar bags and put them in five-gallon buckets. The Mylar bags and the five-gallon buckets can last up to 25 years. And these two, you can push these 10 years easily because it's sealed in the five-gallon bucket. But we got these buckets here. We, get, we go to firehouse subs, right? We get these buckets with the lids for two dollars, and then we we get them. We make sure the rings, these rings are on here where they can seal real good. Woo! It's on it. No, no. There you go. Okay. Yeah, they kind of. Don't have long nails when you open it up. I just split a nail just then. Yeah. But we have them. Make sure they have those those rings in them. This this rubber ring here that helps it seal. And and then you can buy these rubber rings separate if you don't have it. You can get them at uh, like uh, places like. Uh, uh, Winco, Winco them, yeah. and, and, and Walmart even has some of the lids that have the rings in it so sometimes you can buy just a different lid that has a ring in it to seal it with but this is what it looks like this is 30 days worth of food for $20 this is what it looks like it fills a five gallon bucket up all the way to the top right so we've got we've got these different soups in here this is a couscous uh, soup we have uh, we have a uh, red beans and rice we have the oatmeal she has in here she has various meals in here mm -hmm. and we just put it in our five gallon bucket mm -hmm. and we we put our little oxidizers in there let me get those and i'll be right back and you just want to remember not to um have just one meal choice try to have a breakfast and, a, and you know a dinner or 
you know, try to have more than one of the choices that you made. That way you're not grabbing, like, if you have to go on a hurry, you can grab one of those buckets and you're out the door and look at how much food you have. But you want to make sure you have a variety of food. You don't want to just grab one bucket of oatmeal or one, grab one bucket of beans. You want to have a variety. What's she talking to y'all? I told her I was going to be right back. Did y'all hear me say it? But that's all right. I'm glad she talked to you. Oh. <laughs> anyway, uh, here are the Mylar bags that we have. We get these. You can get them from Winco too. Um, and uh, I use the same seal on that food saver to seal them. These are these like these oxidizers, and you put them in there, it takes all the air out of your five gallon bucket. And when I open up one of these packs right here, I keep a mason jar available. I keep a mason jar available to keep these in once I open it up out of the normal package. So this can seal the, the air again and it can keep these oxidizers a little bit longer. So you just don't want to open them up and leave this sack open because you're gonna they're gonna go bad on you pretty quick. So now so I'm just gonna unscrew this, pop that off, right? And I'm gonna take the oxidizers that take away the oxygen in here. I'm just gonna stack them in here, you know, because I, I reopened this. So I stack them in here to take out, you know, four or five, however you wanna do it. Uh, you know, I stack them in there and I kind of shake some down towards the bottom or whatever. Put it back on here because I want my five gallon bucket to seal my 30 days worth of meals. <laughs> and sometimes, some people even take like, let me show you, let's do it that other way. <sighs> I, I know this thing is rough, I'm trying to open it up, I've got to take, cut my nails. <laughs> this book right here, it's putting my nails every time I open it. Hold on. Okay, some people, even in these, they take, uh, Some people will take a plastic wrap, mm -hmm. okay, and, put and it they'll, go, they'll go mm -hmm. over it, you know, cut it however. Just, just some examples of what can be done. Some people take these, some people take them and do it a little bit better than what I can. <laughs> okay, my wife is looking at me like, let me help you with that. <laughs> Help me out, love. See, she might help me. See how she helping me? <laughs> you can cut off that bad part if you want. Is it good? Okay. All right. All right. And then you can put this over over the five gallon bucket. You put these some of them, put these sides these wraps together like this. And then put the lid on. It's options. You have options. You, have you know, options. and it seals really good. Uh, comes in and here it snaps. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to just, just, you can just ball it up and tuck it in like so. You know. And then we have the oxidizers that's going to deplete all the oxygen that's in here. This is going to seal it up. Five gallon buckets are really good. The reason why? Because they keep bugs and pests and mice and everything out of your food. So, so it seals it, it protects your food and everything, and then plus it gives it a more, it gives it a longer duration of time to where you can have it stored up. So that is a plus plus. It's a win win situation. That's what I call it. And make sure you guys use like he said, fire, firehouse subs, uh, five gallon, yeah. or go to a store that might have like a bakery section or something and use the five gallon drums. Why? Because they're food grade. You don't want to put your yeah. food in something that paint or some chemical may have been in. That's a good point. I'm so glad she might help me. Yeah, it should it should have a number two symbol on them, and, and it's sometimes it's on the bottom. It's so like you see here, there's a number two there on the bottom, two symbol, and that's going to be the let you know that that five gallon bucket is a food grade bucket. And uh, firehouse subs usually store their pickles in there, so they smell like pickles and the vinegars. The bugs don't like the vinegar either, so <laughs> that's still a win win for us. Okay, I have split my nail up into pieces trying to open that thing up, so. Oh. But we, we don't want you guys to be stressed out or nervous trying to make food prep meals for yourself. It's actually very easy. You just have to sit down and think about the foods that you already eat mm -hmm. that are uh, 
what do you call have a long shelf life and think about the ingredients that may go into those meals and put those put the ingredients together yeah. the dry ingredients together and then just have the wet ingredients in another location to where if you have to use you know like one man does spaghetti so he puts his spaghetti noodles he puts his you know his herbs and spices and whatnot in his in the same bag and then he turns around and he puts his spaghetti sauce with the spaghetti noodles later on so I mean you have different options you have different ideas so just to let you guys know. Yeah, and, and pretty much anything you cook in the kitchen that you love, you mm -hmm. can dehydrate it and make it uh, to where you can put a pack, seal it, and you can, anything that you normally cook. You can even take a soup. You have these uh, these little solid trays that you can put them on in, in a dehydrator. And if you don't have a dehydrator, you can dehydrate food in the oven. Uh, if you do it in the oven, I recommend the highest temperature you do it in is 150 degrees. So. Uh, and you want to let it sit overnight in the oven and it'll, it, it should dehydrate for you. It, it may take about 8 to 12 hours to do that. I have a dehydrator, uh, so I, 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 I do various things. I stack and, and various things in this dehydrator. Uh, right now, these are some of the trays that came out. And these are carrots. I dehydrated these carrots. So to my ramen noodle mix, I'm going to add some of these carrots here just to have some of the bigger carrots. I have a soup mix that I buy from Winco also. As you know, we, we shop at Winco, Kroger, Natural, Natural Grocers, uh, Central Market, Trader Joe's, various places. This is the corn, okay? And you can get frozen corn or the canned corn. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and they break, and, down, and they break down very well. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, they break down quicker mm -hmm. that way. And then uh, I'm gonna put some corn in here. This is in my, uh, this is the soup. So, and what I do is I take all the vegetables I put in here. What I've done is I took ramen noodles, put them on the stove, and I cook the soup. And I put the flavors that I love in the soup and every, the way I like the soup to be made when I make my, you know, shortcut ramen noodle, cup of noodle soup, or whatever, you know. You can, so, all of these vegetables that I put in here, I normally put in there when I do my regular soup. You know, and, and this one, for the video, we're going to do some things, but I did not dehydrate uh, broccoli. I usually put broccoli, mm -hmm. cauliflower, asparagus, corn, carrots, and, and, and dehydrated celery, and those things. And then if you can dehydrate meats, you can take uh, chicken, beef, however you want, slice it up into cubes, and dehydrate that that way, and put that in, the, in your mix also, if you want meats at, back into your soup. So pretty much when you make a stew on the stove, you can take that stew. Do you have one of those fruit roll-up trays in there? Mm -hmm. Can you get one so we can show them what it looks like? You can get a fruit roll-up tray is what we call it. And they use that for beans, for soups, and things like that. I can put that in the dehydrator. And what it is is for things that are just kind of wet with liquids. I can put that in the dehydrator and it can dry up everything the liquid the soup everything it dries up and you can just take it and crush it up and put it in a bag and that's your soup the soup you just made on the stove you can put in a dehydrator and dry it up that way so uh, here is that soup mix this is a soup mix I get from Winco and it has carrots and celery and onions and various things in it it's very 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 good it's got good flavors in there good flavor profile and I take about uh, a tablespoon of this and I'm going to put that in with my ramen noodles now I'm not using the seasoning pack you can if you if you like the flavor of the seasoning packs of the ramen noodles yeah that's it yeah you can use the seasoning pack of the ramen noodles and just be careful because it's high in salt man. it's super high in salt and Didi's always cautious about salt so she she cautions me about it. And this is green beans that I dehydrated also. And Dee put them in a bag for me. These are green beans here. So I've got some green beans. And I, you know, and I put broccoli and some other things in here. I, did, I just didn't have it dehydrated today. Uh, but I do add other things in here. But this right here with the flavors I, got, I have in, in here, it turns out to be a great soup. I'm just going to put a little bit more green beans in it because I love it when the green beans dehydrate in these things. They're very good. Okay, so 
Let me see what's in the dehydrator. See if there's something there. Because I know Dee Dee's Dee, Dee, Dee on this dehydrator. <laughs> so she can go, she goes, she gets in here now. She has some more. What is this? Is this some? green beans? It's just the fresh cut green beans. Fresh cut green yeah. beans, okay. And beets, I believe. And these are black beans? Black beans, yeah. Okay. Because so I do a lot of beans and rice. I do things that when yeah. you eat it, it kind of sticks with you a little bit, so you're not yeah. hungry like 10 minutes later. So I'll put some more corn. She, she, we usually get them off the trays and bag them up, you know, but she wants to, wanted to show how they come out of the dehydrator and how it's dehydrated for you guys. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. And I think that's all I'm going to put in this one for, well, not all, but my own seasoning, okay? I use, here's what I use for my seasonings. I use this uh, organic, uh, what they call chicken flavor broth, meatless chicken flavor broth. This is an applewood smoke uh, sea salt. And uh, I use, yeah, this is one of my go to's. I now Laurie know how to put some stuff together. So I use some of this. So what I do is I take about, let me see, an eighth. Of a teaspoon of lorries in the smoke in the apple wood. And 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 also, like I said, you want to make this on the stove, you want to take ramen noodles, make it on the stove, put your seasonings in it, remember your measurements for your seasonings, right? And then once you once you get that done, I'll take this top off this lorries. Mm -hmm. okay. And I put an eighth of lorries in there, and this is my little blend that I like and then it's my, my, my chicken flavored uh, ramen noodle soup where it has the vegetables and everything in it and this is the chicken flavored broth and on this chicken flavored broth I'm going to use a half, I did an eighth teaspoon of the applewood smoked sea salt I like that smoke flavor, oh it's delicious in there uh, and then I take um, this chicken flavored broth I do a half teaspoon where's the half at? That's going to be a half teaspoon, okay? And it's got all kinds of herbs and green herbs and, and, and things in it. It's pretty good stuff. I don't know if you can see the herbs that much, but it has herbs and everything in it. Good stuff, you know, and it's, it's a good, uh, if you want a broth flavor, mm -hmm. something dry that you can put in these packs because you want to put dry seasonings in here. You don't want to get the bouillon cubes because they have oil in them. Mm -hmm. You can't store up oil, okay? So I've got that in here, and I'm going to go ahead and put it in one of these packs. I'll let mine out just a little bit longer. Slice that over. And I'm just going to slide it in here. And I got it here. Well, I have to turn it on. I guess it, it goes off. Mm -hmm, it goes off after a while. Okay, power. Okay. All right. And that's that. But, you know, we put together our own meals, uh, you can, various things that you already cook around the house. You can dehydrate and put together. Yep. You know, if you just do it in the oven, like I said, you want your pieces to be a little bit small. Mm -hmm. uh, now, with soups and stuff, in my dehydrator, this is what they call a fruit roll-up tray, right? Mm -hmm. You can put liquids in here and it dries everything. I get a can of chili beans and put it in here. If I like the taste of the chili beans, I just put the whole can in here, dehydrate it. So later on, I add one cup of water. And that's how we mix everything uh, according to the, the foods we put together. We try and make it to where it only needs a cup of water to rehydrate. So we've got it to where if you have one of those big mouth, uh, uh, what you call it, 16 ounce, uh, like Gatorade, the 16 ounce water bottles like this have the big mouth like Gatorade. You can put a, your food in there, you can put a cup of water in there and just put it in, on your backpack and let, let it hang mm -hmm. for the rest of the day. You don't even have to heat it up. If you, if you put it in there early in the morning, by the time lunchtime comes around, it's, it's hydrated enough to where it's okay to eat it and you don't have to look for a place to cook or anything else. You can just have your good hydrated meal just like that. You just have to let it hang in the water a little bit longer. So uh, we uh, have... <laughs> This finished product yeah, here, finished and everything is sealed. It's sealed up, it's sealed in there, you know. So everything is great, and then we we'll put that in one of the five gallon buckets, and we'll stack it up. We'll make sure we have thirty days worth of meal in each of our five gallon buckets, and we seal them off. 
And now that I'm thinking about it, I used to, me and my brother used to eat cereal coming up. And my brother used to drink so much milk, my mom's like, no, I'm not, I'm not spending all this money on milk. And I'm sure you guys may have children out there that love having cereal in the morning. So what you can do is you can go and you can buy an inexpensive dry cereal that they like, that they like to eat, and get the powdered milk. They still sell powdered milk. It's like in a carton, and you measure out how much powder you need, and write on the package how much water you need for the powdered milk. And you can have the powdered milk separate, or you can have it with the dry cereal. When you take your cereal, and you put the powdered milk with it, you just have to add a little bit of water, and it actually makes regular milk. My mom did that for years. She even used uh, vanilla, that, that liquid vanilla, the vanilla extract. She used to put a little bit of that in the powdered milk where she'd make the, the milk uh, mixture, and we wound up loving that more than we did regular milk, and it's less expensive. So that's another meal idea. So we're looking at, you know, guys, if we have to go camping, <laughs> as the elder said, camping, then we want to be able to have some decent food meals until we're able to get things going in a garden or get things growing in an alternate location if we have to go to an alternate location. But we want to make sure that you guys are not nervous about all this. We know with everything, with the sheltering in place and with the COVID-19 and all this stuff going on, we know that the Most High is taking care of us. We know that He has given us provision to take care of our families. And so each one of us, if we have ideas, share those ideas. You know, you don't have to, you know, make a video like we're doing. Or if you want to make a video, make a video. But we have to share these different ideas. We share these different ideas with one another, and we help one another as a family. But yeah, yeah. guys, I did. I just, I just had a flashback because my brother <laughs> used to drink so much milk. When he got grown, oh, he, was drinking, oh, yeah. he was drinking two gallons of milk uh -oh. by himself a oh, week. Yeah. I need this. Yeah. So that is an inexpensive way, guys, to be able to have cereal and milk for your children because we know children... They don't really know what's going on. They, you know, they see all this stuff happening. They've been taken out of school. And so we kind of want to give them what they're used to, what they're familiar with. So just to let you know that, that cereal and that powdered milk, if you can find it, get it. It keeps mm -hmm. even the uh, canned milk. Remember mm -hmm. the canned milk we grew up with? The carnation canned milk? You add a little bit of water with that. That goes a long way. Okay. And like I said, the meals you already prepare, that you already make, you can dehydrate them and make, and, and then create your own future food storage for yourselves. Uh, and like I said, I have a dehydrator, but you can do it in the oven at very low temperatures. It's got to be, uh, it's got to me, 150 degrees and below is better. Some people dehydrate at 200 degrees in the oven, you know, that's fine, but sometimes that, that's a little higher than what I would dehydrate, even though it gets the job done, uh, but some temperatures cause some of the healthier enzymes to leave your food when you're hydrating at a, a higher temperature. Now my, my uh, uh, dehydrator, I use the temperature of 115 degrees to dehydrate and that works perfectly. All my food keeps all of its nutrients, all of its enzymes, everything. So. Uh, you should be still safe in the oven at uh, 150, uh, but you, you can start putting the meals that you normally cook, just put them in smaller fashions, find trays mm -hmm. that you can put them in the oven, and just let them, you know, 8 to 12 hours uh, dehydrate, and then you can start forming your own meal packs and those things. And that's what we're just, just trying to give you an idea of that came off the top of our heads, what we use, mm -hmm. because that ramen noodle soup that I cooked, I will go in, I, sometimes I'll toss some ramen noodles on, i put all those vegetables with it. And then and, and if you got meat, you can uh, have dehydrate meat, you just cut it up in cubes, just little cubes. And dehydrate it and you can rehydrate meat the same way. So just wanted to give you guys some ideas because, you know, we're not, we're not trying to instill fear in people. We're not speaking fear. This is about helping our people as best as we can with what we know, the knowledge we have. And when we we watch prepper videos and things like that, so we mm -hmm. learn from other people that that they do prepping too, mm -hmm. and so we prep all kinds of meals. Now we've got a variety of things, and rice. My thing is with rice, 
If you have rice, go to uh, like Winco, those places and start getting these Mylar bags, okay? And rice, sugar, your seasonings like pepper, mm -hmm. salt, uh, uh, what's another one? Uh, there's a lot of beans, mm -hmm. right? Beans, all those things you can seal in bigger bags, right? Mm -hmm. And if you seal them in these Mylar bags, they're good for 25 years. 25 years so that's you know we know <laughs> your shot gonna be returning a little bit sooner than that from what's on our you know what we feeling in the spirit right but uh still you can have the rice can be like almost like a permanent storage kind of thing sugar is like permanent storage mm -hmm. doesn't go bad you just have to make sure it stays dry yes so that's why we recommend using your bags and then finding a five gallon bucket and putting your food in this five gallon bucket and sealing it because guess what your food is going to stay dry it's going to say it's going to stay dry that way it's not going to have bugs creeping in there it's not mm -hmm. going to go bad on you so you have it good and you you, you know and we've got five gallon buckets because if we have to get up and move guess what i can grab me you know mm -hmm. if i grab me you know 10 buckets you know 30 days in each bucket think about that 10 buckets, you know, I've got a, a, a you know, or 12, I got a year's worth of buckets, you know, of, of food that I've got right off hand. Then I have my water the same way. I have like two and a half gallon jugs of water. I have like gallon jugs of water and I have the, uh, some of the, the blue uh, seven gallon um, jugs of water too. But I don't get the big 55 gallon, that stuff for storage because... I'm looking at us, we knowing who we are, we're going to have to move in some cases, right? So if we have to move and you got a 55 gallon uh, <laughs> woo, tub of water, I call it, or 55 gallon, what do they call it, a barrel, that's what it is. If, if you have to move and you have a 55 gallon barrel of water, right, you ain't going to be able to pick that up. You're going to have to leave it at the house. And, and if you don't have any other things that you can put that water in, then you have to leave your house without water. So we, we've got it to where if we have to get up and go, you know, you can do drills, you know, with the family. If you have to get up and go, you can go and do those drills and, and get those drills and then say, hey, family, we're going to do a 10 minute drill. If we have to get up and go, let's give ourselves 10 minutes. How much stuff can we put in the car in 10 minutes? And y'all do, do that with your family and y'all get together and say, boom, 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 boom. Let's do a 10 minute drill. And so one thing is, the Most High always prepared us, right? For everything, everything. The Most High always prepared us, right? Mm -hmm. So since the Most High prepared us for every situation we've been in, right? For every situation we have to face, we have to be prepared. You hear mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That's what me and we do drills. We go do them drills. I got a Ford uh, Transit Connect van. You know, them little vans look like them business vans. That, that booger right there going to be full. <laughs> We're going to be rolling in that Transit Connect <laughs> <laughs> I told you we're gonna have all kinds of stuff in there. We're gonna get ready, but but the thing is, y'all can do these drills, get things prepared, and just prepare for it. So when it does happen, everybody's not falling apart, not knowing what to do. You giving them instruction on what to do, give what what you need to do. So we we're, we're responding to the situation, not in fear, but we're responding to the situation, being prepared, knowing okay, we were expecting this to happen. We were prepared for this. And so that's what we want to instill in you. And some of the stuff we know we want to share with you. And so, this so, is 89 cents. And these, 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 the, we get these for 89 cents at Kroger, mm -hmm. the gallon uh, gallons of, of water. This is one gallon. And then I have some two and a half gallons in there. Mm -hmm. and, I, and then I have like a, the, the, the camping ones, the big blue ones, are seven gallons. You know, seven gallons is the highest I will go, and you can stack them. They're made to where you can stack them. Uh, but it's the highest I can go because seven gallons kind of gets a little heavy, right? So, but I can carry it. I can carry it with no problem. But, but we're looking at stuff that if we got to carry and move it to another location, get it in a vehicle, mm -hmm. whatever else, we got it, you know. And so, and then we have some other things that we're going to share on this next video. But as for now, we just want to just, just give you some tips on what we do with food and how we, you can with $20, buy your own vegetables, buy mm -hmm. your own stuff, mm -hmm. make your own meals. Instead of paying $5 a meal, that's too high. You can make 30 days worth of food for $20. And if, and if you go in the store and you buy those dehydrated meals, 
that's going to get you four or five meals. That's it, you know, and that's that's about what a day and a half. So so we want you guys to just to show you some of the things that we do just to give you some ideas because everybody cooks things differently and whatever else. But everything that you cook that you like, you can dehydrate everything, everything you can dehydrate. And so when you start thinking that way, you can say, hey, I can bag this up. I can do this. I can put this in five gallon bucks. Boom, 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 boom. What my family likes and how we like this. And then you can seal it up and get it going. So. And I just wanted to say, like I said, you can do things that's inexpensive. Like with this, I believe I can make nine servings for two dollars with this. Yeah. So you look at nine servings for two dollars. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to keep your salt. You're going to keep, you know, the little things that went with this. All it was was salt, cinnamon, and um, sugar. sugar. That's it. So if you look at things like that, even the instant potatoes. I've done instant potatoes with the little chives, salt and pepper. Same thing. Mm -hmm. And the instant potatoes, I believe, are like $2.50 a box. And I can get, yeah. I can get 10 out of that. Yeah, and they're delicious. They're mm -hmm. delicious, y'all. I mean, simple, simple ingredients. You don't have to do anything over the top, but however you cook your food and however you like it tasted, however you like to taste it or the taste of it, right? That's what we dehydrate. Mm -hmm. We dehydrate some things that we pack up and do this, that, and the other. Now, me and Didi started Kato, okay? So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're going to be doing some things a little bit differently. Yes. Um, and we, when we started the Kato, and so, uh, so we, we have meat that we have incorporated back in our diets, but we use the dietary meats that are, mm -hmm. that, are, that, are uh, that the Bible talks about, that are allowed in the Bible. So we, we don't go overboard with stuff, but mm -hmm. we use, we, I am on Kato because, you know, there are some things that I, I, I did the vegan thing for three, oh, three, three, almost four years, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, but I noticed with the vegan diet, I had to have high carbs, Carbs, I gained weight. I worked out in the gym. I did everything I could, and I could never lose weight. And, and when I, I didn't understand what carbs were until uh, Sabal's wife, Tiffany, we went down to do a baptism with them. And once we did that, I learned some things because she was doing a vegan diet like I was, and she was talking about how she was gaining weight. And I'm like, yeah, I've been gaining weight. I was 225. And when I got on a vegan diet, I went from 225 to 285, right? So I'm like, Ugh. and I said, I've been in the gym, I've been running, I've been doing this, that, the other, but I said, you know what? I, I just can't get this weight off, you know? And then when she told me about the Kato diet that they're trying and they're doing and how it's working for them, and I went in and I did some research and me and Lee went and did some research mm -hmm. and we kind of listened because the Holy Spirit says, you know, told us to pay attention to what she's saying. And so I paid attention to what she was saying. I didn't discount it because normally when somebody brings up any kind of diet that involved meat, I would discount it, right? We would, that's what we do. We normally we would discount it. We shut it down. But this time the Holy Spirit said, listen, and guess what? I'm glad I did listen because this diet helps her with her blood pressure. Yes. You know, and so now she's just got to a point where it's just no blood pressure issues, but we're still gonna, you know, we're, we're just doing some things to make sure we maintain, we get away from and do things naturally. And this is, it's helping me also. Uh, it's helping me also, cause there's some weight coming off of me. Mm -hmm. uh, I was at, at a point where even to bend down and tie my shoes, I had to hold my breath and I was out of breath and, and you, you thought I was having a, just <sighs> coming back up from just tying my shoes. I don't have that issue anymore, you know? And the weight's coming off, I'm not trying to make it come off fast, but it is coming off, I've got more movement, I'm more fluid, I've got more energy, and, and guess what? When I talked to you guys last um, about uh, the, uh, the chest pains I had, where it felt ripping pain in my chest every now and then, I had to stop what I was doing to slow down, whatever. Ever since I've been on this keto diet, not one. Not one at all. We've been on this keto diet for two months now. Two months, yeah. So, and, it, and it's, it, it's a blessing, you know, we're learning to eat wise, we're not just doing, you know, any kind of junk food, that kind of stuff like that. We're going to places where we know they check on the farmers that their cows are grass fed, mm -hmm. everything is grass fed, you know, we're doing that, We go, it's a little more expensive, you know, but it's not like I have to eat meat all the time, 
you see. But the thing is, I'm, I realize on that vegan diet, and, and I'm not saying it's a bad, because you can adjust, you can do things, whatever. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work But uh, even when I adjusted on the vegan diet and I, I started learning more and more about carbs and things like that, I realized beans, peas, uh, potatoes, the even the even if it was spelt flour, even if it was garbanzo bean flour, it was still carbs. Nine about eighty five to ninety percent of the diet that I was eating on the vegan diet was carbs, even though I was eating mostly vegetables, but most of the vegetables we were eating were carbs. Sweet potato, carbs, squash, carbs. And so that was the thing that kept the weight on me. So I said, well, let's go to this low carb keto diet. I went here. And one thing about it is that the keto, the keto, I'm sorry, it's not keto, it's keto, it's K-E-T-O. The keto diet, what how it helped me is I got the carbs out of my system and all the aches and those things and the problems I had, they're gone. They're gone. You know, and, and then that ripping pain that I used to have in my chest, I haven't had one episode. I used to have anywhere from three to four a week when I was on the vegan diet. And this and then like earlier this year, it just seemed like it just elevated. I said, I'm not under any stress. I don't think so, you know. And I didn't feel that way, but it was just carbs. So we were eating more carbs and everything that we were eating were carbs. And so I had to cut it down. And one thing about the keto diet, there's a lot of nutrition from your food that you get. And you can get to the point to where all the nutrition you need, you can get from the food you eat. And it's, it's, it's well balanced. In the vegan diet, I was lacking K2. So I had to take a K2 stuff and I was lacking B12. I was lacking vitamin A because most of your good vitamin A comes from retinol, fish eye retinol, right? So fish, you, vegan don't do fish products, right? Uh, what else was I lacking on there? You were doing the coke wasn't you? Uh, no, that's, that, that's, no, that's, I was lacking on B12, mm -hmm. vitamin A, K2, there's another one. I can't think of the other one, but there are some, some pretty major vitamins that I was lacking on, uh, with, uh, uh, with just doing the vegan diet and, and, and if you do the vegan diet I, my hat's off to you I don't have a problem with you mm -hmm. I just want to let you know that I did it for almost four years and it came to a point to where it just didn't work for me not like it should have because I had to supplement so much to get health back in me and I said well with this keto diet everything that you need as vitamins and those things Initially, when you start out, yeah, you're going to use supplements because you get, you're building your body back up to get in here. But after a while, you're going to be able to get all the nutrition you need from all the food you eat on the keto diet. Mm -hmm. And there's no other diet on the planet that can give you the nutrition, your daily value of nutrition like the keto diet can. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing things positive, you know, and like I said, I'm not, I don't knock vegans. I don't knock vegetarians. I don't knock none of that. I just want to do what works best for me. And this right here, like the Holy Spirit told me to listen to Sister Tiffany. And I thank the Most High for you, Sister Tiffany. We love you. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sabal, uh, love you both. Love you both. Uh, Tony and Tiffany, love you both. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so uh, I just want to let you know that it, this is working for me. Mm -hmm. This is being a blessing to me. And I'm noticing the difference. And, and, and it's, it's up. I'm up and going and doing more, you know. So I'm excited about what the Most High is doing. And that's extremely, extremely important to me because now it seems that the Most High is giving me what I need to do to try and get my health and things in order. You know, I'm a little bit more excited about what's getting ready to happen in the kingdom. So. Uh, and all of you all know I do have a vegan channel that we do we support mm -hmm. vegans we still yeah. support them now that's mm -hmm. why we keep the channel up we ain't knocking them even though we're doing this Kato thing right now which is non vegan now but uh, mm -hmm. still we support vegans and we we support people who want to go do vegan that if they need to cook some meals we have some meals that we can show them that we know how to cook on the vegan style but it helps us here too because even in the Kato diet it helps us to to stay on the healthier vegetables, you know, mm -hmm. in this diet, whereas most people just 
some people eat meat and bread and that's it. Yeah, meat, bread, and cheese. Yeah, <laughs> you know, macaroni, cheese, meat, bread, whatever, you know, yeah. but we, we, we could incorporate the healthier veg mm -hmm. vegetables in this diet and work and it works with us. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited. So we're going to do another video. Uh, I'm going to show you some things. We're going to show you some things. We're going to go ahead and stop this video for you guys. We love you. And, and um, we just want you to know that uh, we're trying to do what we can to show people what we know so that we can be a blessing to you all. And that's where we're coming from. It's just to be a blessing. You know, and I love this little lady. See, we in our BDUs, right? <laughs> <laughs> and we, we're being, because we're going to do this next video. And it's going to show you some things of what we got for, even for now. We're just doing some prepping stuff here. We're going to show you some other things that we have. And we're just going to break it up into another video. All right? We love you, family. Shalom.